Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zimmy. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this bubbling, we are happy to announce Game 2. The Zim Game 2 module is now available with help for a game board, and also specifically in isometric form, or in flat, but isometric is, is quite exciting. So let's go out and take a look now. We can find that on the Zim site at zimjs.com under examples, and it's here, game board. There's game board. There's also, let's maybe take a peek at the isometric maze. This was something that was made with game board. Game board is our basic example. Let's see the isometric maze. This is out on CodePen. Here it is. And the idea of the maze is we're trying to get to that round circle. But as you can see, uh, we're mapping out a place there. We can't, this is dark, so we can't get through there. We can only uh, make a bad loop. <laughs> so to solve this, we can use a um, keyboard as well. So let's click in it first, and then we can use the keyboard to move around. So there we are moving with keyboard. Maybe this way. Yes. Isn't that neat? And then at any time, you can also go to get the path. So I think, uh, did we get, oh, we got stuck. I should go back this way. But look, my path goes all the way back around this way, isn't it? Isn't that cool? So there we go. That's with pathfinding. That's easy star pathfinding. And you can specify which tiles to go on and which tiles not to go on. So as you can see, we've got a lot of trees there. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have arrows here, and we'll show that on the basic example. For the maze example, we decided not to do that. Along with the board, we also get a timer class. Oh, this is the timer class here, and a score class that works with isometric, because here's what it looks like uh, in top view, and there's isometric view. Uh, pretty cool, huh? So you can come in and try that maze. If you haven't been to uh, code pen before, please come on in and let's change that view to a details view. How are we doing on things? Uh, 40 likes, give us a like. Uh, come on in and look, fork it, try it out. And so this is all a free place that you can come and work on front end development. This one was um, done by Zim. Uh, inventor Dan Zen also has a code pen account and we sort of run these in parallel. All right, so that was that example. And then let's take a look at the, the basic game board here. So uh, here are those arrows that we were talking about. As we press the arrows, the game board moves. That is if the data for the game board is bigger than the actual board. So that's what we've done here is the data for this board is five or six squares bigger on, on each side. So as we move, we can even go off the screen and back on the screen. Now in this case, we've got a couple things going on. Here we can set colors. So boop, 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 boop. Green is the color that it will always choose to go on, which is sort of makes it fascinating. It, it's a, in a sense a free square. So if we if we take a look now to go into move, and we want to move to this location, look at how it goes. It just goes <laughs> right along the green because that's free. Orange is harder to, oops, that's a movement. We have to now go back to toggle to the color. Orange is harder to move on. So if we drop some oranges in here, it probably won't go along there. It, it takes these ones, which are sort of let, uh, each one has a cost in a sense. So by default, I think these are 20, green is free, orange is 40 or 50, trees cannot be moved on. So that's why the path can't go on a tree. But we have to set those things up in the code. Uh, let's see, we can record this. So this shows the data that, uh, that we've just made. That's all the data for the whole thing. And we can also, uh, we were supposed to be going over the orb. Where'd the orb go? There it is. So every time, uh, we've got a light scoring game going on here. If we get the orb, we get five. So that just went up five. If we go to some place like that and don't get the orb, then it takes off one. <laughs> so as you can see, the orb is sort of jumping around to different places here. So that's the light game we have. This also works with swipe. So if I swipe up or down or left or right, we can swipe through these things. So the arrow and the swipe kind of work together. Now that we've looked at some examples, let's dig into some code. So we'll reduce this. 
Here's that basic example, the code for the basic example. We're bringing in the game module. We're also bringing in Easy Star. Can you see that okay? Easy Star there. And this is a, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. So why don't we just go and show you that it's well commented. We bring in the board. There's how to make a new board. We have a bunch of different parameters that we can pass in, including we can specify the certain data. Uh, we are bringing in some things from local storage now to, so that it will remember what was recorded. And that uses a thing, this thing called Zimon, which is pretty cool, and we'll show you that later in a, in a bubbling. Here's us building an orb. Now what we've done is thrown some fun things into that game module. We have an orb, we have a tree, and we have a person. So those are the three things. There's the person. Uh, they just make little quick things that you can put on the board. You're welcome to put whatever you want on there, sprites or uh, so forth and so on. There's a tree. Uh, this is us showing changing the data. So this is a way that we can add something. We're adding a new tree right there to a point in the data that is off the board. You can do that. And local storage stuff again, looping, building people and orbs and trees that are on the board already. Uh, adding keys, so adding the keyboard to the player and to the orb as well. Just as an example, you can move around with keys. Here's us. Is this getting ready to collect? What is this board interaction? Um, so when we tap on the tiles, what do we do? We're either going to be setting colors or we're going to be um, following a path. So it depends on whether we've got that toggle set or not. So there's how we make the player follow the path, etc. That is if there is a path. If there's not a path, uh, because they might be just tapping on the board, perhaps they didn't move around with their keyboard, it could be on mobile, maybe they've just tapped on it, then we need to actually get a path and follow it. Timers and scores, there's us making the new timer. So that's available in the game module. <laughs> and there's a new scroller, uh, some navigation at the bottom, there's the color picker, here's the button that clears it, here's the button that um, turns between the top and the isometric view, here's the button that records, and there's the pathfinding stuff with Easy Star, setting the various costs. So it all adds up, even though it was a basic example, you can see there's a fair bit of code here. But uh, each bit of code, as far as we can tell, is about as simple as we can get to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. And there's us going through and getting the path and um, telling the board to show the path. So the path stuff is all in behind uh, to be able to create paths based on what Easy Star is telling you an array is. So Easy Star will give you an array of coordinates, uh, almost like Battleship A1, B2, B3, those, those are the directions you have to go. And you pass that in uh, and show the path, and it will show the path. Yay! Uh, if you want to follow the path, then you say follow the path and tell it the path and off goes the player to follow it. Here we are doing the collecting and scoring, making sure that if, if we've moved, did we collect an orb? If not, then we take off points, that type of thing. Our local storage, there's the Zimon, which we'll talk about later. It's a way to, well, just briefly, it's like JSON, a way to store objects as strings, but JSON only works with arrays, object literals, numbers, um, strings, and uh, null and boolean. Whereas Zim Zimon works with other objects, including all of Zim display objects. So that person, um, uh, a rectangle, uh, an emitter, a particle emitter, etc. So that's really cool. You can store that out as a string, bring it back in, and recreate it. And there we go. We're down to the header and footer. Woohoo! So uh, that is what's bubbling with Zim. It's a new uh, game two module. And we've added a board, which is isometric or top view, a score, a scorer, and a timer. And uh, that's excellent. It made us, it allowed us to make that maze, which is something, you know, we love mazes, something that 
we like doing uh, in an afternoon sort of thing, and that would have taken way longer. This is based on the work that was done for a game called Carboon. It was unlaunched because we were waiting to uh, launch the isometric board. And now we have. We'll probably launch Carboon in a little bit. It's uh, where a flying saucer follows you around and tries to get you in a park, and you're collecting <laughs> these carbon balls, Carboon balls, that are that are um, from where the saucer hit the trees. And uh, also you get the, all these people get zapped and taken up into the saucers. There's other people in the park also. <laughs> it's sort of a fun game. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day. Come on in and build with Zim. If you're digging this, come to zimjs.com slash slack and hang out with us. Ciao.